Reading this morning is from Matthew, chapter 23, verses 23 through 33. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you tithe mint, dill, cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy, and faith. It is these you ought to have practiced without neglecting the others. You blind guides, you strain out a gnat but swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup of the, of the plate, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and of the plate, so that the outside also may become clean. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like whitewashed tombs, which on the outside look beautiful, but inside are full of the bones of the dead and of all kinds of uncleanliness. So you also on the outside look righteous to others, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you build the tombs of the prophets and decorate the graves of the righteous, and you say, if we had lived in the days of our ancestors, we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. Thus you testify against yourselves that you are descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up, then, the measure of your ancestors, you snakes, you brood of vipers, how can you escape the judgment of hell? Thank you, Rich, for that happy reading. <laughs> his, his first reading, I'm sorry that that was, <laughs> wow, that's a good one. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, if I haven't met you yet, I'm, I'm Trevor, I'm the pastor here, and I just want to welcome you to Neighbors Church. I hope that you feel comfortable here, I hope you feel welcomed here, uh, and I hope you feel loved here. That's, that's really what we're here for. Um, we don't have a lot of bells and whistles, as you, as you may know. Uh, we don't really have a high techno or electronics. There's no uh, water wall or exploding things or anything like that. Well, they could explode, but it won't be planned. <laughs> but we believe in a very deep and simple approach. We cut things down to the minimum because we believe that our focus is on the message of Christ. And that message is one of love. And I hope that whatever uh, you hear here, whether it's in the message, the songs, uh, having coffee with your neighbor, that you walk out with that message. Um, this is a tough one. We are, we're following the book of Matthew. And the problem with following books is that I can't, you know, there, you get to the stuff that's kind of like, ugh, that's a, kind of a downer for Father's Day. You know, that's a... Um, but it's an important one. It's incredibly important. Uh, Jesus is angry in this one. It's extremely angry. He's angry at the religious leaders. So much so that you can just see him I don't, know, I don't know if you've ever in, been in a situation where you have just kind of lost it and you're, you're spitting your words and you're just, you know, you're just name calling and you're just unloading. That's what's happening here. This, that's what's happening from the Son of God. He's calling the religious leaders hypocrites. He's calling them brood of vipers. He's even saying, how can you escape judgment? The reason he's so mad is because this is important to him. This topic is one of the most important things that he is here to talk about. It's going to get him into trouble, but this is one of the things that he is most adamant about, and that is people misrepresenting the kingdom of God. Jesus is here to tell everyone 
they're loved. The reason he walks the earth is to tell every single one of us that the kingdom of God, it's for you. And he gets really irate when somebody misleads that message. When somebody messes with that core message. And that's what's happened with some of these religious leaders. And I do want to I want to emphasize, Jesus is not talking about the Jews. He's not talking about a, a, a blanket. He's talking about the people that are in front of him. Those are the ones that he, are, he is confronting. It's the scribes and Pharisees that have been criticizing him, that have been trying to get rid of him, and he knows why they're trying to get rid of him. It's because they are not living up to the calling that they have. And he's calling them on the carpet for it. Or dirt. I'm not sure what they had been, but hypocrites. You tell your people one thing, but behind the scenes you are doing something completely different. You, you tell people things that make them feel like God's love is conditional. You tell people things that make them feel like they may not be welcomed in the kingdom. You live your lives as a way that is not an echo of what you are saying. And that is what makes Jesus so angry. Because when we deceive people, we hurt people. And Christ is not about hurting people. This is an angry message that we fail to quote in our, in our today time. We quote a lot of stuff out of Scripture to use it, to make people feel bad about themselves, or to say that you've got to change, or to, but we fail to quote this one. You don't see it on a lot of bumper stickers. It would be too long. I mean, you'd have to have a Winnebago or something, but, <laughs> but you don't. You don't see this one used when Jesus is saying, you talk about all this stuff, but you are missing the point. And what is the point? Justice, mercy, faith. You're failing on all three of those counts. You ever have people that you follow? A, a hero? Somebody that you've, you've looked up to? That's, that's what the religious leaders of this time were to the people that Jesus is preaching to. And they're being misled. They're being harmed by this, this mixed message. They're talking about, you know, the, the, the hoity-toity stuff. And the, yeah, that's right, I said hoity-toity. And the, and the <laughs> kingdom and all of this kind of stuff. But they are failing to push the message of justice, of faith. Of mercy. Mercy is truly why, why we're here. God's mercy for us. We're supposed to carry that mercy forward. And we haven't done a very good job of it. There are churches, religious leaders, that don't, still don't give that message. We, we claim to be holier than thou, but our justice is defined by hating somebody else. Our mercy is defined by writing a check and sending it somewhere, but praying that the people that we send it to don't actually come and sit with us in the pews or the uncomfortable chairs that we have. But. <laughs> and the faith is conditional. You pray so you get stuff. We continue to mislead. That's why Jesus is so angry. You ever wonder why he's so angry then? It's because he wants that anger to carry 2,000 years. He wants us today to feel that anger to, so that we can understand just how important this is. He wants us to understand that if we're not following somebody 
that truly preaches Christ, we're following the wrong people. And we're going to get hurt. We do that with, with politics too. We, we pledge our allegiance to either a politician or a party. And many times those parties will promote, they'll say they're faithful. They'll say that it's all about their, their faith. But their actions are not showing it. They, they want us to believe in them and hate somebody else, villainize somebody else. Well, that knocks nurse, mercy out right there. A lot of people know that I was a stand-up comic. Um, no proof today, but it's... Um, I, when I was a kid, I, I, a lot of people know this story, but I, I was inspired by an album I found in my parents' record collection. And it changed, it changed my uh, trajectory. It's, I was spellbound by the storytelling and the humor. And this person became a hero of mine. It was the first person that I truly followed. You know, we follow people on Facebook. This is fan following. It led me to be a storyteller. It, it led me to be a comedian. That's who it was. And you know what? When his colors were truly shown, when he fell, I fell a little bit too. And a lot of people did. I, I, when I would go to clubs, we would do uh, comedy clubs, and then the comedians, we would go to uh, a restaurant or a bar, you know, late at night, one of those all-night open things. And we would talk, and we would tell jokes, and we would, you know, be sarcastic, but we would talk about our heroes. This guy was a hero to a lot of people. There's a lot of people that are doing comedy today because of him. We looked at him as a good storyteller. We looked at him as a, a comic, creative. We looked at him as a family man, fatherhood, America's dad. And all the time, we were being misled. And it crushed us. When we, when we follow somebody, I pray that the people that we're following are Christ-like. Because when we mislead somebody, we hurt everybody. When we are not our honest self, we hurt people, including ourselves. God never calls us to be perfect. But if you put the name Christian on your badge, he's calling you to represent and to know what you are representing. None of the disciples were perfect. But they had a mission. And that mission was to continue to spread the news. The news. And that news from the very beginning was that Christ was here for you. There's a lot of people we follow today that will tout that, they'll say that, but they won't do it. We have leaders in our, in our communities, in our government that, that, that tout things like that. I'm a Christian. And in the very next sentence, they are saying such awful things about their opponent or another person, or a race. And yet we still follow them. That's what makes Jesus so angry. 
because we're being misled down something that does not take us to Christ. Do we follow people that truly remind us of Christ? Again, not perfect, but sincere. It was, it's taken a long time to, uh, to shake off the, the Cosby thing. I, to this day, I cannot uh, listen to anything that he's ever, ever done. I, I just can't. There's just too many, there's too much there. There's too many people that have been hurt. I just, it changed everything. And there are times when you wonder if anybody that you follow is sincere. Anybody that you befriend is sincere. Again, not perfect, but sincere. I, when I started to struggle with this, uh, this nudge, this calling, this uh, punch in the face to be a pastor, oh, I fought it. I did. I really did. Still do sometimes. I, I found an unlikely... Um, source that helped to inspire me? Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Might have heard of it. <laughs> For some reason, around that same time, I started watching that. I was enamored by the fact that every show, every moment that he had, he was continually saying, you're loved. This ordained minister was his mission to go on the media and share the news. Christ's news. You've made this day a special day just by being you. And sometimes, you know, it's, it almost seemed too, too nice. Can I believe this? Can I believe this guy? A lot of people, you know, when you, I've been in radio and I was in media and I met a lot of celebrities. Some of them were pleasant, some of them were not who you think they are. So you develop a, what's, what's behind the scenes here? And when we first started this church, when we first landed in this, uh, this building here, we in, invited this guy. This guy is uh, David Newell. You might recognize him as Mr. McFeely from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Not only was he uh, in every show from the first to the last, but he also was the uh, PR guy for Fred Rogers. He traveled with him. He knew him probably better than most people. And I can tell you, he's the genuine deal. He's not perfect, but he's the genuine deal. He told me that Fred would take a script of the show and he would, for hours, most of them he wrote, edit it, and make sure that every word is said right so that the message is clear. He, he worked so hard to make sure that nobody was hurt by his messages because he was so passionate about what he did. He was passionate about spreading the news, the good news. For Fred, it was the news of Christ. That's sincerity. He wasn't perfect. He was kind of a dork at some times, too. I remember uh, uh, David showing me this, uh, this like, um, uh, what was it, like a, a, a jumpsuit thing. Uh, and we were at the, uh, the, the museum here. This is David and I. We're at the museum in Pittsburgh. And he shows me this, and he said, yeah, Fred, Fred wore that almost every day. Looked ridiculous in it. David is in his 80s now. Fred's been gone for a long time, and the show has been off for the air for a long time. 
But that has never stopped David from continuing his mission of spreading the news, of telling people that they're loved, of telling people that Christian message that every single person on this earth is loved. Every single person. He answers, and he still gets a lot of mail. And he will spend hours on it, making sure that he answers every one of them personally, by hand. Oftentimes, he'll send a little gift. I remember at, at this, we were, we were looking at some stuff, and there was a, 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 a group of people from out of town that recognized him. And he said, I'm so sorry, I don't have a, an 8 by 10 but I, I, a, a picture I could sign for you. I, I, I would love to give you one. So give me your address, and I'll give you one. And, and Dave is kind of a, a busy guy. You know, he's got a lot of things going on his head, and he'll, sometimes he'll forget things and things like that. And he misplaced the, their address. And for the next three days... That's all he could think about. This, this one couple that he, he couldn't find the address. He thought he'd lost it. And he felt so awful that he was not able to, to give them that message. Now, a lot of people would just look at that and say, well, you know, they know where how to reach me. But to him, it was, it was important. Because every person that he ran into was important. About two weeks later, he called me and said, uh, it was on my desk. So, <laughs> can I share a message from him? Here you go. Hello, my name is David Newell. Speedy delivery, that's what you know me better as, Mr. McFeely for Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And I'm taking time out for my speedy deliveries to say hello to you. And remembering the time that I was right there in the neighbor's church visiting with you, and I love my weekend with the neighbors. I remember my visit to your church. I remember my wonderful talks with Pastor Trevor, and since I can't be there in person, we're doing it the way Mr. Rogers does through the media. Thank you very much for spreading the news around the neighborhood. And remember, speedy delivery. I, yeah. I think David probably has about 100,000 people that think he's a close friend, just by the way that he is. Those are the people that we can follow. Those are the people that we can be inspired by. It doesn't have to be somebody floating power or... It, you know what? It can even be somebody that you know. Your hero doesn't have to be a, a, a politician. It doesn't have to be a, a superhero. It doesn't have to be a celebrity. It can be the person sitting right next to you. Right now. Are there people in your life that truly emulate the love of Christ? You know, to some people, you are one of them. You don't have to be perfect, but just be sincere and know that you've made every day a special day by just being you. That's why we're here. Spread that message. Spread that message. Would you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, how can we represent you the best? How can people, when they look at us, see you? How can we be there for our neighbor? for ourselves, for you. Help us to be the disciple first. Everything else 
falls a, different, a distant second. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen. You know, we were at the Pride uh, uh, Fest, and during that time, uh, Jim here was, uh, don't stand up, you're way too tall, um, <laughs> was talking to a group of people, and afterwards he said, is it okay that I, that I referred to neighbors as my church? I hope you all do that. That's why we're here. This is your church. This is your God. Please don't ever forget that. And remember, above all things, it's their God too. Love God. Love yourself. And go out there and love your neighbor.